Good day, Matrix, and welcome back to our life sciences lesson. Today we are looking at scientific investigation, and we are starting with the reliability and validity of that session. Please make sure you do have your pen and paper ready to write down notes, and don't forget to write your questions in the comment section so we can get back to you. So let's have a look at reliability and validity in the scientific investigation. Now from our previous section, we learned that there are three parts to our scientific investigation write up. The first part is the introduction and explanation. The second part right, is how the investigation was conducted. In other words, the procedure. The third part is the results. And you'll see from past question papers that it's always laid out in that manner. Now, when we speak about reliability and validity, remember, we are going to look at the procedure. In other words, how the investigation was conducted. Let's first have a look at reliability. Now, reliability, all right, we first need to understand this word. If something is reliable, it means we can trust it. But how do we get something to be reliable? If somebody you know is reliable, it means that every time you ask them for a favor, they do what you expect them to do. And therefore you say they are a reliable person. If someone did something for you this time and next time you ask them they didn't do it, you'd say that they were unreliable. And it's the same thing with an investigation. For an investigation to be reliable, it must give you the same results every single time that you do it. So how can we make sure that an investigation is reliable? Well, there are four basic things that we can look at in an investigation. The first thing is to repeat the investigation. Right? By repeating it, you're doing it again, and you're proving that the results you got the first time are the same. Okay? If your results differ, it means that something was wrong with that investigation, and it is unreliable. So repeating the investigation shows reliability. In some cases, we can increase the length of the investigation. Right? This is not in all cases. But sometimes if we do the investigation over a longer period of time, right, it will also give us more reliable results. The second way is to use a large sample size. If we are only using one or two subjects in our sample, the results will be unreliable. A large sample size means that all our samples should have similar results, and that would make it reliable. We can also take several samples and find an average. It means we are not relying on just one result, but we are taking many samples over a period of time to find an average which would be more accurate for us. The last way is to do random sampling. By doing random sampling, we are not favoring any subject. Okay, so let's have a look at this investigation and how to answer questions on reliability. Now the first thing that you must remember is that when you asked why an investigation was reliable, you need to answer the sub this question specifically for the scientific investigation in your question paper. For instance, don't just say there was a large sample size. Okay, We say that 37 females were used, all right, in this investigation. Don't just say they repeated the investigation. We say they did this investigation three times a week for three months. Okay, so always remember that if you are asked for the reliability in the investigation that you were given, be specific. So let's look at this investigation from our trial paper one. In this investigation, what did we do that made our investigation reliable? Firstly, did we repeat our investigation? No, this investigation was only done once. Secondly, was there a large sample size? Yes, 60 rats 
were used in this investigation, which makes it a large sample size. Were several samples taken and an average found? Yes. Okay. They extracted samples from 10 rats, okay, and they found an average. Also, all right, they did the sampling of the 10 rats randomly. So it means that this investigation was reliable because it used 60 rats. It took samples from 10 rats and found an average, and the scientists conducted random sampling. If we were asked in another question how we could improve the reliability of this investigation, then we'd be able to say that we need to repeat this investigation because this investigation wasn't repeated. Let's have a look now at how validity differs from reliability. Validity speaks about how well you did the investigation, how accurate you were with doing the investigation, and how correctly it was carried out. Now, when we speak about validity, we need to ensure that the variables in our investigation are kept the same. Right, so let's look at this specific investigation. Remember, we are looking at the procedure of the investigation because validity is how you carried out the investigation. Now, what variables did we keep the same in this investigation? In this investigation, we used the same species of rat, the albino Wistar species. The a number of subjects in each group was 20. We divided each group into equal amounts. Right. Also, all the rats were healthy and they were fed the same diet. Okay. Also, it ran the investigation over 90 days, so they were all tested for the same time period. So these factors make this investigation valid. If we were asked how could we improve the validity of this investigation, we would need to look at other factors that might influence this investigation. Now, there's nothing, no hard and fast rule that you can learn for validity, because with validity and reliability, you have to apply it to this investigation that you are given. But let's look at some examples from past papers that might help you to remember what to look for. Okay, so some examples are keeping the age the same, keeping the sex the same, the same species, the environmental conditions such as temperature, sunlight, the cage, keeping the amount of what is measured the same or what is given the same, keeping the equipment the same, and keeping size the same. The size of the rats, the size of the uh, cage, right? It may differ according to your investigation. So what we need to remember here is that when we read the investigation, we need to apply these examples. So let's practice that. In this, exa in this example, okay, males were tested for the amount of testosterone which indicated fertility. Now, we could have kept the age the same because age would affect fertility. So for this investigation, keeping the age the same would increase the validity of our investigation. What about sex? This investigation was only conducted on male rats and only looked at male rats. So for this investigation, sex would not need to be kept constant because it's in our aim. The same species. Species was already kept constant, so it would not be a way to improve validity. Environmental conditions. Okay. What environmental conditions were kept constant? Was temperature kept constant? The scientists did not state that they kept temperature constant in this case, 
but we also need to consider will temperature affect fertility? And yes, for temperature may for uh, affect fertility. So keeping the temperature the same would be another factor, all right, that would improve validity of our investigation. What about sunlight? Sunlight was not kept constant, but will sunlight affect fertility? In this case, sunlight won't fit affect fertility, so it does not influence this investigation. Cage size. Cage size might affect the movement of the rats and how they can interact in the cage. Right? So cage size could affect male fertility. So that is another fa factor that we would keep constant in this investigation. Then amount of. What was or what were the rats given? They were given water with microplastics in them. Was the amount of water controlled? In this case, it wasn't. They controlled the amount of microplastics in the water, but they didn't control the amount of water. So another way to improve validity for this investigation would be to control the amount of water that was given to the rats. Equipment, okay? If the scientists would need to use the same equipment for testing the blood samples for each of the rats, okay? In this investigation, they did not say that they kept the equipment the same. Therefore, equipment could be another factor that we kept the same. Right, and then size, okay? The size of the rats could be another factor that we keep the same. But will that influence fertility? In this case, the size of the rats would not necessarily influence fertility, but rather the age of the rats would be a greater influence on fertility. So as you can see, you need to be specific for the investigation that we are doing, all right, and use factors that will influence the subjects in the investigation. Right? So there's no hard and fast rule, but if we learn these examples as factors that may influence validity, we can then apply them and see if they are relevant for our investigation. The next step to any investigation is planning. Right? And planning steps are also specific for each investigation. But there are planning steps that we can learn and apply to most investigations. Okay, so the first one is to get permission. When we are working with animals and humans, right, it's important that we have permission to do the investigation, right? Humans, we might ask the people for permission themselves or if it's learners from a school, we would ask the school and the Department of Education for permission to do the investigation. When you are working with plants and bacteria, you do not need permission to do that investigation. So this would not be considered a planning step when working with plants and animals. Uh, sorry, with plants and bacteria. A second planning step would be to determine the sample size. We need to know how many subjects we are going to have in this investigation. And this would be relevant to most investigations that we have. The third one would be to decide on the length of time. How long are you going to conduct the investigation for? So to decide the length of time you will run the investigation. You would also have to decide how to measure the dependent variable if you cannot directly measure that dependent variable. So in our previous example of the male fertility in rats, we had to decide to use testosterone level to measure male fertility in rats. We could have used sperm count to measure male fertility in rats, but we decided in our planning that testosterone would be the way to measure male fertility. We'd also need to decide on how to record the data. 
Would the data be recorded in a table or in graph form? In planning steps, we would also need to collect the equipment needed. Now, not every experiment has equipment, so we can only use this planning step if our investigation uses equipment. So these are just some examples of planning steps, but remember that your planning steps must be based on what the scientists did in the investigation in the question that you were being asked. And that brings us to the end of this session. We'll complete the scientific investigation in the next session. Thank you for joining us for today and don't forget to put your comments in our section so that we can answer them and get feedback from you. Thank you.